Hello. Um, in this short uh, screencast tutorial, we're going to talk about Alfred. So Alfred, along with Listery, are utilities classified as app launchers. Um, app launchers allow you to perform certain actions like search your um, computer or search the internet or perform many other actions direct from a command prompt. So let's just dive right in. After you download Alfred 3, you don't need to buy the power pack. We are going to be just using the free version that has an extremely useful feature. So after you download it and install it, go ahead and open it up. And the first thing that we need to do is um, set the hotkey. So by default on a Mac, when you press command space, you will get the spotlight. So spotlight is the um, the native app launcher of OS X. Um, it's very good. It can search the internet. It can search your um, search your disk. It can perform some actions. It's really improved in the recent years. But we're going to do something that um, we want to install something that's a little better. That it's good. The out of the box experience is good. But we want something that can do everything that we want it to. So the first thing we need to do is disable the hot key. That is the combination of keys that you press to summon something by going to the system preferences and you can go to keyboard shortcuts spotlight and you want this will be checked by default you want to uncheck it so that when you hit command space nothing will happen we're going to replace that with alfred so the way that you get to the Alfred um, preferences pane is that you should up here in your toolbar have a little bowler cap of Alfred. So let's go to the preferences. And here in general, it asks you to set the Alfred hotkey. It's set to something by default, but we are just going to press on this and set it to command space. So now whenever we hit command space, we'll get the Alfred prompt. Let's go to the preferences. All this stuff up here is pretty much um, is mostly not available to you. You have to buy the pow power pack. It's like $36 or so. Um, I definitely think it's worth it, but it's definitely not necessary. So the thing that we're interested in is here in the features, um, the default results. This is um, allowing you to set the search scope for searching your own computer. So you can set the exact um, folders that you want it to search. Um, we're not going to deal with this today. You can play with that on your own. Um, what we're really interested in here is the web search. This is why we recommend that you use Alfred over um, just the vanilla spotlight that comes with your computer because we can set all sorts of different web searches and this can become this can get extremely useful. So typically if you want to search for say an image on Google then you need to go to google.com um, search images and then say the thing that you want to search for. So that took a whole bunch of different um, steps that I had to open up my browser, I had to go to um, Google, had to search, switch over to the image search and then type in my search. Let's take a look at how Alfred makes this whole process simpler. So with Alfred, you just summon up the Alfred command prompt, um, type the keyword of the search that you're trying to do. In this case, it is images. See search Google images for dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna hit return and then just search for the thing that I want to search for. So um, let's search for lolcats. And there we go. We did a Google image search for the particular thing that I wanted to. So instead of opening up the browser, going to Google, going to Google image search and putting in my search query, then we can just go directly to the thing that we want to be at. And so it doesn't matter if we're in our mail application, if we're um, on Spotify, from anywhere on your computer, you can just immediately search for the thing that you want to search for. So let's see how we can actually how this whole thing works. So let's do another search 
and figure out how th these things are actually constructed. So I'm going to search Wolfram Alpha by typing in the beginning of the keyword and you see that once it's got it selected on the uh, top part then just hit that or hit return and we'll say uh, a Charmander curve. So I have searched for Charmander curve. We can get all the uh, mathematics that go behind this if we wanted to here on Wolfram Alpha. But what we're um, what we're interested in is figuring out how the query string. If you look up here in the address bar, you'll see that it's just WolframAlpha.com and some stuff. But Charmander plus curve. Well, that's the exact same thing as we put down here in the search bar. So. The URL is actually what does the search for this online service. It's how the user communicates with the search function of this uh, service. So I can change this to something like Squirtle Curve. So whatever I put down here gets sent up here to the URL, and that's how a search is made. That is what we call the query string. So let's create a completely new um, custom search using something that might be useful to you. So I'll hit add custom search. It's going to ask you for the search URL, the title, the keyword, and um, this is just a test that it actually works. This is the search URL right here for Wolfram Alpha, but we already have that. So let's use something that might be useful to you, like uh, JSTOR. The process for figuring out the search string or the query string for basically everything is about the same way. So let's just search for something here on JSTOR. So we did a search for Chris Benner, or sorry, just Benner. Now we need to hunt through the URL up here until we find the part that is what we actually searched for. So action, do basic search, blah, blah, blah. query equals Benner. There we go. So I'm going to copy this down over there, go back to Alfred, and if you read these directions right here, perform a search on a website and copy the resulting URL. Replace your search term with query in curly brackets, for example, like that. So I'm going to delete Benner and replace that with the word query inside curly brackets. The title is just what's going to show up um, when you start typing the thing. So I'm going to call this search JSTOR. You could have a add a icon if you want to. I'm not going to do that right now. And the keyword is that is the thing that you type to bring up the shortcut. So I'm just going to type. I'm just going to make it JSTOR. So when I open up the command prompt, then I'll just type JSTOR and then hit return and then do my search. So Let's save that and let's see if this worked out. So I'm going to start typing JSTOR, search JSTOR, sweet. So I can either complete this and then start typing my um, thing. Actually, you can't do that. You need to hit return. So I'm going to search JSTOR for, um, why not banner again? Oh, look, there it is. So you can build yourself a research search um, set of tools. So searching for ProQuest is kind of, on um, ProQuest is really annoying. You have to go to the library website and then log in and then do all this other stuff. Any website that you search on a regular basis can be made into a custom search that you can just summon up immediately. So you are researching something and you say, oh, that's really interesting. I'm going to look that up on Google Scholar. And you'll immediately be taken to it. You don't have to stop your train of thought. You don't have to um, fiddle around with opening new windows and going to the thing that you want. Everything is at your fingertips. You can go anywhere you want immediately. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, go ahead and get yourself set up with Alfred.